Hi, I'm Mike Ono, The Ingroove in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm going to do a little bit of a mini review on the new Animals 2018 Remix. This is actually the box set, but this review would really pertain to most of the releases that have come out for this. I've spent a lot of time with this now. The actual album came out a couple weeks ago, maybe three, four weeks ago. This comes out this week, actually uh, Friday. So the only difference is that, you know, with this is you get the album. It comes in this hardbound book. This is actually affixed to the back. When you get it in the cellophane, kind of looks like this. But uh, the big difference to this is it comes in a hardbound book as opposed to the actual album itself. And on this, you get the album which you might already have, but you're also gonna get the Blu-ray audio mixes, which are uncompressed high-res mixes and uh, 5.1 surround remix. You also get an uncompressed 24-bit 192 uh, Blu-ray file. You're also gonna get DVD audio, uh, the original mix and the remix as well, and also in surround sound uh, with a CD. So three discs, three CDs, and the album. This record has been the biggest nightmare for me since I've opened the record store. And the main reason being, and I've talked about it quite a few times, is the defect rate. This was pressed at Dick Industry, which is normally not a bad plant in the Netherlands. They do a lot of music on vinyl records, which I've not really had a problem with. Uh, they've done a lot of electric, I think they're the folks who are doing all the electric recording company stuff who I've had a lot of problems with. So. It's not completely unheard of, but the defect rate on this is not just noisy, poppy, clicky vinyl. The defect rate is due to heavy scratching, splotchy scratching. So they come stored in this paper inner sleeve, which isn't great to begin with. You know, paper inner sleeve, that's not gonna cause the record to get scratched. That would cause scuffing and whatnot. There's a little bit of that, especially where it puts pressure on the lip. You've probably seen that lines of scuffing that go on the bottom of the record. That is due to extra pressure because of the seam of the paper. Uh, that's not audible. Splotching and scratching, the, 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 the smattering of scratches is a problem. First time I've ever instituted, if you don't get an ultrasonic cleaning on a record, from me, I will not pay your return shipment because that also includes inspection. Just because with a 40% defect rate, a lot of these things would have to come back, which, you know, until this came out the first run, man, I'm taking it in the shorts as far as paying for return shipping on a record that, you know, is not that expensive. So every one of these that I sold before, yeah, about four or five days ago, has been of a giant loss to the Ingroup financially. But, I still love this. A, once you clean it, you ultrasonic. I've not really, you know, for the most part, a little bit of noise here and there, but this has been no problem. It's been, you know, the ultrasonic really helps. You get past the initial scratch and you get a copy that's scratch free. Clean it, yeah, <laughs> no more problems. Okay, so as far as a box set goes, this is my preferred way to of getting a box set because it's thin. Uh, and it doesn't take up a lot of space on the shelf. Okay, so I did some in-depth, you know, I played it initially in the store and I thought to myself, wow, this just sounds fantastic. So I did some in-depth listening to this over the last couple of days at the house. So what I did is I actually put, this is another standalone item, the SACD. So it came out SACD, a Blu-ray DVD combo pack. It came out a standard CD, standard album, and then this. But with this, in this, you have all the formats that came out. So this is really, if you're gonna collect everything, this is all you need. But what I did is I set my CD player volume mash with the actual album and I went back and forth. Really similar. Uh, hard for me to make a judgment call sound wise because my analog rig is so much higher end than my uh, digital rig and I kind of got that tuned cartridge wise to my taste. So I preferred the vinyl, had a little bit a uh, little bit more mellow sound to it, a little less harshness. But again, I put a lot more money into my analog rig, so it's not really a fair comparison. 
But the reason I did that is I wanted to go back and forth and just make sure there wasn't anything glaring, uh, which there wasn't. But then after that, I put the SACD on, and then I put my best sounding UK first pressing 2U copy on, and I went back and forth between the two. <laughs> so it's kind of funny because I've heard people talk about, ah, they much prefer the original sound quality. The overall presentation is, you know, a lot of people are really into the original. You know, and that's for different, you know, different strokes for different folks. But the minute I flip the switch, like my first, you know, when I went back to the CD, SACD, going from here to here, my first overall thought was like, like, wow. Why even have all this equipment? Because this record, I can get the same sound quality out of, you know, my system with this, I could have, you know, a system that costs a couple of grand and probably get it to sound just as good. This is just so much better. And people are like, well, it was the artist's intent of having, you know, the original sound like that. It was doomy and it was, I don't really think that's the case. My thinking on it is they wanted to get out of, you know, I mean, there was problems within the band. They wanted to get out of Abbey Road. They did this at their own recording, you know, at their offices in their own recording studio. And because of that, they were heavily limited as far as what they could do sound quality wise. You know, a pop-up studio is not going to compare with the, you know, with Abbey Road in the 70s. This was the anomaly, and I think it was an anomaly because it just doesn't sound good. This, compared to the remix, is just a crummy, crummy sounding record. I know the blanket over the speaker analogy is wildly overused, but holy cow, man. This is no comparison. I, this just doesn't sound good. I just don't envision a time where I'll ever listen to this again. I love having all my copies of things, but if it, it, it would be like the equivalent of the A-Track. Like, why would I ever listen to the A-Track over this? That's the equivalent of what this new remaster brings to the table. I saw Roger Waters in concert last week. One of the things you'll notice live is something that you'll notice on this that you don't notice on the original. When he's doing the Bible verse, the Psalms verse, uh, it's a clear, audible human. When you see him in concert, it's the same thing. When you see, when you hear it on this, it just sounds, it's just not there. You know, there's keyboard parts. I don't know if they're so buried in the mix that they're not audible, or it's a sound quality issue, or maybe they brought it up. But the keyboards are, not, you know, they're, they're arranged in the mix, I think, in a more pleasing fashion. Those are nice to hear. But the main thing is the sound, the timber of the drum set, the toms, and the bass guitar. On this, they're defined. It sounds like a drum kit. It sounds fresh. It has pop. The bass guitar has pop. And you can really hear David Gilmore's uh, playing on this. Turns out Roger Waters only did one track of bass on this album. Uh, it makes sense because the best bass I've ever heard on a Pink Floyd record is on this record. It kind of, David has throughout some of the tracks a really funky sound to his bass playing. You know, almost like, you know, like an R&B funk sound. Not funky, but like funk R&B. Parliament Funkadelic, a funk sound in his playing style. And it's just awesome. And it's so prevalent on the new remix. It's not, it, it sounds like a bass guitar. I mean, that's, when you're reviewing these things, I think it's a, has a, you know, I'm a, I'm a musician. I know what a drum set's supposed to sound like. I know what a guitar is supposed to sound like. I know what a bass guitar is supposed to sound like. This has a more lifelike authenticity in the bass instrument. So whether it's the snap of the tom, the kick drum, and just the playing of the bass, it's a tighter, dialed in, more dialed in sound. You know, when he mutes the bass guitar, it, it stops. It's not bloated. It's tight just has a much better sound to it. I mean, this album rocks, man. Uh, it's unfortunate that the quality has been so bad. 40% defect rate is 
off the chain. If you're a guy that goes back and forth between digital and analog, I can see you buying the SACD or maybe just the deluxe version. You know, most people that have uh, players have the ability to play. You know, if you have like an Oppo or something, you can play this and an SACD. Me, my Macintosh CD player, which I got in a trade, it's not something I would have sought out and bought, but it doesn't have, it only has the ability to play CD and SACD. But, you know, it's well worth getting the inspection, buying it, getting it to your house, and it's nice and clean and dialing it. And it might sound like I'm selling you something. That's not the case. It's just with a defect rate this high, get it, have it clean, know it's done, and, you know, don't waste your time having to mail something back to me or anybody else because it's defective because there's a good chance it's going to be defective. Now, when they do a second run, I'm sure it'll get cleared up. But the problem is how many... You know, I've gotten this from a few different places now, and they've all had similar issues. So I'm guessing it's kind of something that pertains to the entire first run. And what I'm hearing online is the same thing. No matter where you are in the world, keep in mind it's a worldwide release. No matter where you are in the world, people are experiencing the same thing. So when these sell out, if they repress it again, that'll be fixed, I'm sure. Because the label's going to hear about the defect, right? People have asked me, like, what do you do? Normally I eat the defects. Because one or two, three records... It's not worth the amount of time that I have to spend to handle a return through a manufacturer because it's very time intensive. You know, I don't want to pay somebody five hours, six hours worth of labor, you know, hundreds of dollars to do a return on three records that cost 30 bucks a piece. But when you're dealing with hundreds of records, it's a different story. So I'm sure a lot of people are in the same boat as me store-wise, manufacturer, or excuse me, retailers in general. So I'm guessing they're going to get a lot of these back and uh, somebody's going to be chewed out for the defect rate. Things get fixed behind the scenes. A lot of people think that the manufacturers, the labels, they don't care. They just keep putting out crap and who cares. If you look at the old Blue Note Classic Series, we had a lot of no-fill issues. We had issues. Anybody notice that problem anymore? No. That problem is done. And I have a feeling this will be put to you know the rest on the second run as well. But right now, man, it's just brutal. This is a waste of time. It really is. If you don't agree, tell me how wrong I am in the comments. But for me, for my dollars, I mean, this makes me sound like I upgraded everything in my system. And I didn't have to do anything. I just bought a $30 record. Or, you know, this is 100 bucks. But, yeah. So uh, tell me what your, you know, tell me your comments and thoughts. Tell me about the overall mix. If you have both of them, I'd be curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are. If you A, B the two of them. Tell me what you think, not just the stylistic choices between, you know, increase this, decrease that instrument, but the overall clarity and the definition of the instruments. Let me know what you guys think. All right, guys, until next time.